This week we're not doing the full review because we've done Nissan Navara to death. We've been literally inundated with comments, so we're going to try our very best to answer three simple questions. What's Navara like on the highway? What's it like in town? And what's it like to park? This is going to be no mean feat. I'm trying to pull onto a highway 100 kilometers an hour. No one's gonna let me in either. I've got my foot flat to the floor. 60, 80, 100. Wow, that um, that <laughs> took a fair bit of a fair bit of oomph and a lot of gut. So now that we're on the highway, how does it feel? Steering, beautifully neutral, really delightful. The ride, absolutely sensational. I mean, I realise this is a relatively smooth road, but nonetheless, the ride is absolutely beautiful. Now you'll remember a few weeks ago, we took this car, uh, well not this particular one, but another top of the range Navara, out to the farm. And we splashed around in some puddles and a bit of mud and what have you. As well, we climbed to the top of a very rocky mountain top. And Navara was unbelievably capable. Both Navara and Hilux that we tested are four-wheel drive, proper full four-wheel drives with high and low range. Of course, on the highway, you'd leave it in two-wheel drive, and that means that at least whilst you're on the highway, you're using much less petrol than you would if you had four-wheel drive engaged. That's the important thing. You choose when you want it to go into and out of four-wheel drive. Plus, you've got the high-low range, and that's the main difference between an all-wheel drive and a four-wheel drive. I mean, there's others as well, but if you're going to keep it simple, that's just a simple way of thinking about it. There are a few things, though, that Navara is missing out on, and because we've reviewed these cars fully, I'm not going to go into it again, but there are a couple of things that I think are worth mentioning. For example, there's no active lane control, no active cruise control, no autonomous emergency braking. So, a little bit old school. I could get out of this, as I did when we went to the farm, after a very long trip and feel completely fresh. The driving position is excellent, so at 100 kilometres an hour, I can see exactly what's going on ahead, I can see what's going on behind, and there's a little window where that back camera is mounted, see? And that has a little button down on the dash that opens automatically. Now you want to know how easy it is to park. So I pulled into the local Maccas. Let's see if I can find a spot between a couple of cars. Righty-o. So I'm going to put my indicator on. And you can see the reversing cameras come on. And in one move, I'm in. What could be easier? Let me show you. So now, I've pulled into a, one of those new housing estates that Sydney has with a gajillion apartment blocks and these streets are incredibly narrow, really, really narrow. So, in these streets, you've got to allow just a little bit more space, especially when you're turning. Coming up to an intersection though, Navara doesn't feel any different to driving anything else. Sure, you're aware that you're in a very big vehicle, but it's not unmanageable. In fact, the view from up here is as commanding as it was out on the open road. There you have it, we've answered those questions 
And for the full review, I'll put that in the link for the video description below. Meanwhile, as always, if you've liked the video, please subscribe, leave a comment and hit just there to subscribe.